The theme of the reading is No Time, No Age. And now the readings will be given by Florence from Georgia. Thank you. I am reading from King James Version of the Bible. Psalms. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy love and kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Isaiah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Second Corinthians. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Joshua. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenesite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to espy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, My brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenesite, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Second Peter, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Luke, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the cause of Abiah, and his wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they 
had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. The angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and I'm sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus had the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Second Corinthians. For he says, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Proverbs. For by me thy day shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Job. And thine age shall be clearer than the noonday. Thou shalt shine forth. Thou shalt be as the morning. I will now read correlative passages from our textbook, Science and Health, we teach the scriptures and miscellaneous writings by Mary Baker Eddy. Life is without beginning and without end. Eternity, not time, expresses the thought of life, and time is no part of eternity. One ceases in proportion as the other is recognized. Time is finite. Eternity is forever infinite. Now, cried the apostle, is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation, meaning not that now men must prepare for a future world salvation or safety, but that now is the time in which to experience that salvation in spirit and in life. Now is the time for so-called material pains and material pleasures to pass away, for both are unreal because impossible in science. Mind creates no element nor symbol of discord and decay. Neither age nor accident can interfere with the senses of soul and there are no other real senses. Year, a solar measurement of time, mortality, space for repentance. One day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Second Peter 3, 8. One moment of divine consciousness or the spiritual understanding of life and love is a foretaste of eternity. This exalted view, obtained and retained when the science of being is understood, would bridge over with life descent spiritually the interval of death, and man would be in the full consciousness of his immortality and eternal harmony, where sin, sickness, and death are unknown. Time is a mortal thought, the divisor of which is the solar year. Eternity is God's measurement of soul-filled years. Man in science is neither young nor old. He has neither birth nor death. He is not a beast, a vegetable, 
nor a migratory mind. He does not pass from matter to mind, from the mortal to the immortal, from evil to good, or from good to evil. Such admissions cast us headlong into darkness and dogma. The error of thinking that we are growing old and the benefits of destroying that illusion are illustrated in a sketch from the history of an English woman published in the London medical magazine called The Lancet. Disappointed in love in her early years, she became insane and lost all account of time. Believing that she was still living in the same hour which parted her from her lover, taking no note of years, she stood daily before the window watching for her lover's coming. In this mental state, she remained young. Having no consciousness of time, she literally grew no older. Some American travelers saw her when she was 74 and supposed her to be a young woman. She had no care-lined face, no wrinkles, nor gray hair, but youth sat gently on cheek and brow. Asked guess her age, those unacquainted with her history conjectured that she must be under 20. Years had not made her old because she had taken no cognizance of passing time nor thought of herself as growing old. The bodily result of her belief that she was young manifested the influence of such a belief. She could not age while believing herself young, for the mental state governed the physical. Impossibilities never occur. One instance, like the foregoing, proves it possible to be young at 74, and the primary of that illustration makes it plain that decrepitude is not according to law nor is it a necessity of nature, but an illusion. The measurement of life by solar years robs youth and gives ugliness to age. The radiant sun of virtue and truth coexists with being. Never record ages. Chronological data are no part of the vast forever. Timetables of birth and death are so many conspiracies against manhood and womanhood. Except for the error of measuring and limiting all that is good and beautiful, man would enjoy more than three score years and ten and still maintain his vigor, freshness, and promise. Man, governed by immortal mind, is always beautiful and grand. Each succeeding year unfolds wisdom, beauty, and holiness. Life is eternal. We should find this out and begin the demonstration thereof. Life and goodness are immortal. Let us then shape our views of existence into loveliness, freshness, and continuity rather than into age and blight. A woman of 85 whom I knew had a return of sight. Another woman at 90 had new teeth, incisors, cuspids, bicuspids, and one molar. Custom, education, and fashion form the transient standards of mortals. Immortality, exempt from age or decay, has a glory of its own, the radiance of soul. Comeliness and grace are independent of matter. 
the recipe for beauty is to have less illusion and more soul, to retreat from the belief of pain or pleasure in the body into the unchanging calm and glorious freedom of spiritual harmony. The uncumbering mortal molecules called man vanish as a dream, but man born of the great forever lives on, God-crowned and blessed. Man is as perfect now and henceforth and forever as when the stars first sang together and creation joined in the grand of harmonious beings.